Hello, my name is Arlene Gilliland and I'm the CEO at Destination Port Stephens. It's a pleasure to present this next session in our Small Business Big Impact Program. Today we are joined by Lisa Harpley of the Business Centre who will be presenting a session on how social media can help build your small business. Having worked closely with businesses in the Upper Hunter for more than a decade, Lisa's unique insight and understanding of these communities, their industries and challenges enables her to guide them and assist them in achieving their goals. A popular face in the region, Lisa has worked for several well-known local organisations in advisory roles. Offering support and advice in areas such as business development and recruitment, marketing and advertising, along with running her own digital media business. Lisa is a networking pro, having coordinated many events in the region and leveraging the database of contacts allows her to connect business with the right people and the right information. As this is a pre-recorded session, Lisa will be available to answer your questions using the chat function throughout the duration of her presentation. No need to wait until the end of the session. This recording will also be available on this platform for another three months and if you can share it with your clients and colleagues who weren't able to join us here today. This session is proudly sponsored by Destination Port Stephens. Welcome to the Business Centre's presentation on how social media can help build small business. First, I'd like to start with some information on who the Business Centre is and who I am. The Business Centre is all about creating sustainable economies and resilient communities. The Business Centre is a community invested organisation that has been responding to the needs of entrepreneurs, businesses, governments for more than 34 years. We're a non-for-profit with the sole purpose of creating sustainability in jobs, businesses, urban and rural economies. Our strength has been built on our ability to develop long-term relationships, listen and respond to our community while adapting to continually changing business environments. We deliver experience-led advice, mentoring, education, and connections to achieve customer and community goals. So who am I? Well, my name's Lisa Harpley. I'm a business advisor, mentor, and trainer with the Business Centre. I'm also the co-founder of Upper Hunter Women in Business. I'm a lover of digital marketing, marketing and an avid handbag enthusiast. I'm based in Musselbrook in the Upper Hunter, and I've been working in the Upper Hunter region now for the past 12 years. My first introduction into digital media was when I was managing the four local newspapers in my area. This was at a time where it was really making a change from that traditional media sense to, to digital platforms. Um, so that really sparked a passion for me. I've since worked in various areas of marketing and I'm also Google AdWords certified. I've run my own digital media business where I assisted small businesses with creating their brand uh, their social media management and their digital marketing strategies. Just this year, I founded the Upper Hunter Women in Business. I have a passion for connection and collaboration within our small community, which I believe is vital, a vital part to businesses success in a smaller community. So why do I love digital media so much? I love seeing my clients getting the measurable results from their campaigns engaging with their audience and customers like never before. Thinking back to my print newspaper days, what information would a business be able to gather from their printed ad? And, and how would they measure if it was a, a, a success? Perhaps when they'd have a caller, they would ask them how they heard about them. Would they always remember to ask? Uh, would the caller even say? If they got people to their website from their printed ad, how was this measured? It wasn't. Billboard advertising, okay, how, how was that measured? Are people getting out, stopping their car, getting out, tapping a big giant red button, counting their views? No, that would be a bit ridiculous. Digital marketing allows businesses to get that information from impressions, which is their eyes on ad or their post, and through engagements, their actions from their ads. How has digital marketing helped my clients? Digital marketing can often be done at a much lower cost than traditional marketing. 
through insights and reporting, you're able to get a better view on who your target audience are and what their spending habits are, something that was not measurable before in traditional marketing. Social media posts, webinars, video content, they all provide an opportunity for engaging with the client directly. Through digital marketing, customers feel like they have a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with your business. How social media can help build small businesses. So I've, I've developed 10 tips uh, to help build your business and your brand through social media and digital platforms. So let's uh, take a look at some of those. Know who your target audience is. Create your business avatar or your target audience. Who are they? What are their interests, age, sex, location, relationship status? We've been brought up not to stereotype, so it does feel very bizarre to do that, but it's so pivotal to, to creating your avatar and knowing who you're speaking to. Starting out in business or running a small business, you, you can't afford to speak to everybody. Businesses that can afford to speak to everybody are the really big businesses like Coca-Cola, McDonald's. They have massive advertising budgets. Most small businesses don't. You'll need to really focus on your most likely target audience. So make sure you're doing your research. When you think about how McDonald's advertising campaigns are structured, they have a specific way um, of of their targeting their audience and speaking directly to that audience. For a basic level example, Happy Meals. They're aimed at kids. They use their bright colors, they use toys, a sense of fun. And then on the other end of that spectrum, they have their Mac Cafe products. You know, they're, they're, they're really um, shining light on quality coffee on the go and cakes and slices, something that's a bit more refined to their typical menu. They are speaking to a completely different audience here. They're using different language, even different colours. So the Happy Meal box is bright red and yellow and the McCafe products, they've got that beige colour and the brown. So they've really separated their target markets there. Secure your domain. Having a website is important in this day and age. Your website often acts as your digital business card or your sales channel for most businesses. If you're not in a position to start a website or not quite ready, make sure that you're still securing your domain name ASAP. You need to get dibs on it, snap it up before anybody else does. Do it yourself templated websites are often a good start for small businesses. They're low cost and easy to set up and manage. Utilising social media. So social media, your online presence and identity begins with your website and social media platforms. You can engage with your audience, communicate your message with powerful content through a strong social media platform. As a small business, one of the first things that you probably worked on was your active social media strategy. Social media is the key to leveraging your brand awareness and value. Be consistent and regular in your social media strategy to maximise on your growth. Good social media strategies can have a profound impact on lead generation and conversions, brand awareness, and of course, better search engine ranking. So it's about being where your target audience is. So when you're thinking about social media and your target audience, you know, if you've got a younger demographic, apps and platforms like Snapchat and TikTok, that's, that's where your audience is going to be. They're great platforms for you. Uh, Facebook is an awesome brand awareness for all ages and, and excellent for refining down and targeting your audience. If your brand is more of a visual, artistic or creative sort of brand, Instagram's the place for you. Um, it has a strong platform in this area. If you think that because your audience is mostly other businesses and you're a business to business type business, LinkedIn is a great platform for this. You're able to connect with other businesses and business minded people. You can also supplement that with a, a Facebook page um, for your brand awareness. Social media content. Look, I work to the power of three here. 
um, a minimum of three posts per week with a mix of promotional, educational and engagement pieces. No one likes to be sold to all the time. This is an opportunity for you to engage with your customers and share your knowledge. Consider the user experience. This is particularly important when creating your website. Do you want your, how do you want your customers to feel about their interaction with your business? Were the processes smooth or are there too many steps for them to make a purchase? Is it, is it clunky? Do you have to move around a lot? Um, you know, human beings, we've become very lazy online. So if something becomes more difficult or takes a bit longer, they're generally bouncing out. So we need to be able to make that as smooth, smooth as transaction as possible. We're going to have a look at a case study on this a bit later on. Creative content. Um, creative content that is unique and fresh um, it can have a strong impact on your target market, from communicating your brand's message to engaging your customers with information. Content is supreme as it gives you something useful to your potential customers. Sharing insightful articles, how-tos, helpful information is not only engaging, but it sets you up as subject matter experts that you are. So customers can trust in you, but also if shared in a blog on your website, this can also help you with your SEO. Again, remembering the power of the rule of three, promotional, educational, and engagement. Search engine optimization, SEO. So we've, we've spoken about SEO a little bit already. Google are a great example of their user experience. They want their users or searchers to get the most relevant results in their search terms as possible. So how do they do that? Well, it's up to you to ensure that your website is displaying to Google and its algorithm that you are able to provide what you're saying you're able to provide. And we do that through SEO. SEO will look at all aspects of your website and page optimization, device optimization, credible link building for better visibility and search engine results. For example, in, in Google's highly important updates a few years ago, websites that were non-responsive on mobile devices and you know, would no longer appear in search results, regardless of their SEO measures. Again, looking at that customer experience, Google highlighted that you know, majority of their users were Googling from their mobile device. And part of their user experience is making sure that when they click through to a website that they've recommended, it, that it's mobile friendly and that experience is a smooth transition. There's lots of ways to improve your website's SEO for free. Links to your website, for example, you know, having your website listed on your social media, getting a Google My Business page uh, with your website listed on there. Use keywords, uh, so there's a great keyword planner that's available on um, Google AdWords. Using a blog on your website. Use uh, YouTube for your video links, um, for, your for your content on your website. YouTube is a, is a Google product, so they love when you use their products, of course. <laughs> All these actions tell Google that when they display your website in their search result, their users will not be disappointed. It's relevant to their search terms and is a valid source of information. Video content. Now everyone's like, yeah, I don't like, I don't want to do a video. Don't be afraid to use video content. Videos are a powerful tool to communicate extensively. Video has proven to be 80% more engaging with audience than a static post or an image. As mentioned, it can also help with your SEO on your website. It develops that personal connection between your business and your customer or audience. And users are looking for that engagement, that personal touch or human side to your business. So measure and adjust. This is what sets traditional media and digital media apart getting those measurable results. You need to use that to your advantage. 
analyze your insights and your reporting and see what's working and, and what's not working and make your adjustments. The beauty of that on social media is that running these campaigns is so affordable that you can run these campaigns just purely for testing out audiences and getting that intel and reporting to really refine down who you need to be speaking to. What's working where, what's not working, perhaps my target audience isn't this demographic. I'm getting a lot of results for the over 40s. I thought my target audience was going to be under 20. So this is, this is a great way um, to really optimise on your digital media. Branding, having a strong and recognisable brand. Be memorable, be consistent with your branding including your logo where possible, and sticking to your brand colours in your post. This all helps uh, for your audience to recognise your brand when they're scrolling through their busy, busy news feeds. It takes approximately eight times for someone to see your brand and to really see it. So consistency on a reg regular and repetitive basis is the key. You want your audience to recognise your brand from others. When we think about brands we know and love, our brain automatically remembers the colours or the images that you've used on a consistent basis. I know when I think of some of my most loved brands that I, I use regularly, I, I think of their colour and their branding first and foremost. Having a plan. Everybody loves a plan. Plan out your digital marketing strategy. Set some goals around what you're hoping to achieve. Create some actions towards these goals and, and measure those results. We will look into this further in our um, sales funnel section a bit, in just a bit. So this is the case study that um, I referred to a bit earlier. So let's consider the digital customer journey I've gone through recently when I've had a sore neck. So a few weeks ago, perhaps old age, perhaps, you know, I slept wrong, but I woke up with a really sore neck. I couldn't move it at all. I rang my regular chiropractor and they were not able to see me uh, within three weeks. I um, mean, that quite often happens in smaller communities. <laughs> Um, but that was not helpful to me right then. I could not wait three weeks to move my neck. So from there, I'd remembered seeing that a new chiropractor had come to town and I'd remembered seeing their post in my newsfeed. So I visited their page for information on their business. I read some of their reviews, their content. I've also visited their website. This chiropractor had excellent reviews and consistent content they were sharing information, really setting expectations and being the subject matter experts that they obviously were. And in turn, they were building that trust. I felt like I was going to be in safe, competent hands. And believe me, when it comes to your neck, you want to be in safe, competent hands, right? So as a follower of this business already on social media, however, I was a passive follower. It wasn't really until I had a need for their service that I engaged with them. I made a booking with them online that was really quick and easy because by this point I was, I was very impatient. I was in a lot of pain. Their information sharing and that trust building and that ease of booking and that's what really converted me into being an ongoing customer. So in turn, from my experience with them, I left them a wonderful review for that business. So now as an engaged customer, they've kept me in the loop with emails on tips and tricks and changes that were happening within the practice. I received text message reminders of my appointments and in turn, I feel a part of that family every time I visit that business. So if you look at the brand awareness aspect of this case study, of my sore neck. I, I remembered seeing their paid Facebook advertising when they first came to town and I instantly liked their page. Their sponsored ad was really engaging um, and also I like to keep on top of new businesses that come to town. So I, I was obviously going to like their page, keep an eye on them. 
I continued to see them engaging in online communities um, and building that awareness. So they were very proactive in letting the, our community know that they were here, the services that they provide. They were giving lots of um, educational pieces and really setting themselves up as subject matter experts. This, this business has been able to service my needs at every stage of the sales funnel. Let's take a look right now. So digital marketing is all about reaching your target audience through various online method, methods to optimize your conversions. One of the best tools to help with your digital marketing campaign is to consider the sales funnel, which is the process users need to go through before they convert. When starting out, for example, you'll spend a lot more time in building that awareness and attracting new customers. Over time, the trick is to engage people at different points of the sales funnel. Um, so you need to get the, the best results possible. So my neck example, I was already engaged with this business. However, their actions on social media kept me aware of them. So when I had a need for their service, they were front of my mind. So they attracted me in through their brand awareness campaign. However, I was then, you know, really in this midsection of the funnel until I had a need. Then I re-reviewed their content and, and did my research, felt comfortable that they'd built that trust with me and then I connected with them. Further down this, this sales funnel, they've then continued to engage with me as an ongoing customer to ensure that I'm still engaging with their business. So they've really nailed all aspects of their sales funnel. So that's my uh, top 10 tips uh, for social media and digital platforms with branding. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, if this, these are my details. Again, my name's Lisa Harpley. I'm a business advisor with the Business Centre and I've just got my contact there, details there should you uh, like to contact me. Thank you very much for your time. It, it's been great speaking with you. Thank you, Lisa. That was fantastic and we appreciate your time contributing to the growth of small business in Port Stephens. Lisa will be available for one-on-one -on -one appointments all day today. Just pop over to the Meeting Hub and catch up with her at a time that's convenient. We will see you soon in the next session. Thank you. Thank you.